Tony Ferguson was once one of the UFC's most feared lightweights, riding a legendary 12-fight win streak. But after years of mental health battles and lost title opportunities, he hit a seemingly unstoppable losing streak. Let's explore Tony's journey from domination to despair, his fight for wellness, and quest to regain glory in the cage. Tony Ferguson was born in 1984 in Oxnard, California. From a young age, he showed athletic promise, competing in football, baseball, and wrestling in high school. Tony excelled at wrestling, winning three state titles for Michigan by 2002. After graduating, Tony continued wrestling at Central Michigan University before transferring to earn a degree from Grand Valley State. He dominated the NCAA Division II level, winning a national championship in 2006. With colleges completed, Tony moved to California to be near family. He worked in sales during the day while bartending at night. One patron recognized Tony's cauliflower ears from wrestling and introduced him to MMA. Tony took to it instantly. Tony began competing as a pro in regional promotions in 2007. He won early fights against tough opponents like Joe Schilling, gaining experience. In 2010, Tony was selected for the Ultimate Fighter Season 13 as a welterweight. Tony really wanted to be on the UFC's reality TV show called The Ultimate Fighter. He had tried many times, but they only chose him in 2010. By then, Tony had a good record winning 10 fights and a title. He was picked to be on Season 13 as a welterweight, medium weight. On the show, Tony was chosen third to join Coach Brock Lesnar's team. In his first fight, Tony knocked out Justin Edwards quickly. Next, Tony beat Ryan with punches and the ref stopped the fight. After that, Tony defeated Chuck after hurting him with strikes in the third round. This put Tony in the final to see who would win the show. It was a big opportunity for Tony to get a UFC contract if he was victorious. His knockout power helped him advance through the tournament with relative ease. For winning the show, Tony got to fight Ramsey in the UFC. This was to see who really won TUF. At the event, Tony knocked Ramsey out fast in the first round. He won the UFC contract and bonus for best knockout. After that, Tony moved down to lightweight and faced Aaron. The referee stopped their fight in the first round too, when Aaron said his jaw was broken. For his next fight, Tony battled veteran Eves Edwards. Tony won the close fight using his wrestling to control Eves on the ground. Tony was scheduled to face Dennis, but he got hurt. Then the replacement, Tiago, also got injured. So Michael Johnson stepped in. In a tough matchup, Tony lost a close decision to Michael. It was his first loss. Tony had early UFC wins, but showed he could be beaten at the highest level. After over a year off, due to an arm injury, Tony was ready to fight again. He faced Mike Rio and won by submitting him with a darst choke. This gave Tony an award for best submission. Tony then knocked out Katsunori Kikuno fast in the first round. He was set to face Danny Castillo, but that event was canceled. They fought later, and Tony won a close decision. Next, Tony made Abel tap out in round two with another submission. He was lined up against Yancey, but Yancey got hurt. So Tony fought Gleason instead and submitted him quick to earn a bonus. In his next fight, Tony defeated Josh Thompson, using his wrestling to control him on the judges' scorecards. He was due to fight Khabib, but Khabib pulled out hurt. Edson Barboza filled in as Tony's replacement. Tony dropped Edson with strikes and then choked him out while getting a bonus too. Tony kept winning and fighting top guys for years. During this long streak, injuries and issues kept recurring scheduled matchups with Khabib from happening. Tony stayed busy beating quality opponents like Rafael Dos Anjos to keep climbing rankings. He ultimately earned a title shot against Kevin Lee by submitting him in the finale of this legendary run as interim champion. But Khabib remained elusive as Tony's long-desired opponent. However, multiple booking attempts fell through due to weight-cutting issues and freak accidents. Tony was forced to sit on the sidelines as champion without an actual title fight for years. The delays took their mental toll. In early 2019, Tony was acting very differently at home. His wife Christina became worried about him. Tony was not sleeping for days and was very paranoid. He tore apart their fireplace believing something was inside. He also thought doctors put a tracking chip in his knee during surgery. These behaviors scared Christina. Even though Tony did not hurt her physically, Christina filed to keep him away for his own safety. She wanted him to get medical help. The order was only meant to help Tony with his mental state during this strange time. Christina dropped it by April once he started seeing doctors. Tony was finally set to face Khabib for the real lightweight title. But Khabib got stuck in Russia due to coronavirus travel rules. Instead, Tony fought Justin Gaithje for the interim belt. The fight was postponed too, then happened in May 2020. Justin outworked Tony over five rounds until he stopped him in the fifth. Justin Gaithje ended Tony's win streak by TKO. It was the first defeat for Tony after seven years on top. 
Tony faced Charles Oliveira next. Charles dominated Tony with his grappling, controlling him on the ground for a decision win. Things were not going well for Tony after his losses to Oliveira and others. Even though he was still popular online, Tony started seeming lonely and odd in real life. Some said he acted paranoid or unstable. The Dariush fight showed no signs of improvement. Benil easily took Tony down and rained powerful punches and kicks on him. One moment stuck out. Benil wrapped his leg in a submission hold very tightly. It clearly hurt Tony a lot, but he refused to tap out. Only the toughest fighters can survive such pain. While Tony lost, fans gave him credit for his bravery against the submission. Soon after, Tony fully recovered from any leg injuries from the fight, but it was clear he desperately needed a change to get his career back on track. Without a team and losing regularly, Tony's relationship with the UFC was becoming stressed. His personal life was taking a hit too due to all the struggles. A solution had to be found quickly. Tony was knocked out early in his bout with dangerous striker Michael Chandler too. He then lost to Nate Diaz by submission. Dropping back to lightweight, Bobby Green finished Tony late in their fight via submission. In his latest fight, Paddy Pimblett beat Tony on the scorecards. With the loss to Paddy, Tony tied the record for most consecutive UFC defeats at seven matches. It's been a steep fall from his dominant winning days. Through it all, Tony's determination and heart have kept him fighting. While the shadows of mental health and consecutive defeats loom large, Tony believes returning to his wrestling roots can lead him back to the top. With a legendary legacy already secured, Tony's greatest battles may yet be won outside the cage. Tony Ferguson's story shows that nobody's demons can outweigh their ability to overcome. By openly discussing his own struggles, Tony hopes to help others facing mental health challenges feel less alone in their fight. For Tony and MMA fans worldwide, the battle continues. Tony Ferguson's steep losing slide is very sad to see, but his guts and will to keep fighting despite big problems are still inspiring. Leave your thoughts on El Kukui's complicated story and future hopes below. And please like and subscribe for more MMA fighter life stories from Fulton Draper.